is Cindy Leach, your polymer clay tuner, and today's studio tip is using a jewel tool for buffing polymer clay. Now this is a new tool I've got in my studio. I'm very excited about it. It can do a gazillion things. Um, it's jewel spelled J-O-O-L and tool T-O-O-L. So that's, but what's really neat about it is um, uh, all, a bunch of things. It's a rotary tool here I'll just quickly spin it and you can see that it's it spins like that so but what's great about it is you can buy all these little discs and they're called ninja discs and the with the design with this cut through design it, when you use them you can actually see through the top and this is the first um, tool or rotary type tool that I've seen that works in that manner. So they have all these different types of discs. You um, you get this plastic disc first and then you add uh, different sanding discs and things for them. Um, and you can get them in you can basically sand anything, polish anything, grind anything with them. There's, I'm, I'm waiting on an order for um, some ones that I will work better for polymer clay. And actually, you, it works best if you have a cushion there. But I want to today show you the buffing, the way I do buffing on, with this tool. Now, um, I've got a uh, shop vac hooked up to it. It doesn't come with it. You can order um, quite an expensive um, uh, vacuum system for it if you want, but I just have this $30 shop vac that I've just uh, plugged into the side here, which is beautiful for um, uh, collecting any dust that you have. When you're buffing, you don't have any dust, so I won't need to turn on the vacuum to show you this part. Now, down below here is the dial, and it it's such a quiet little machine. It takes hardly any space on your um, desktop. I have it on a little table that's a little bit lower so that I can see up above it. Um, and like I was saying, with these little discs sort of spin on and off so you could change out whatever grits you were using really easily. The, surface that, the work surface that you're working on goes face down. And what happens is, so you just spin them on like that. Because of these little cut throughs, when it spins fast, you can actually see your work through it. So I'm going to lift my piece up to the to um, to the spinning uh, disc here, and you can see your piece through it. And that makes it completely different than anything else that I've ever worked on. A Dremel, you have to kind of keep bringing it up to the spinning surface. On a buffing wheel, um, same sort of thing, and then you have to keep checking back. Here, you can work on it the whole time. So if you're sanding and buffing, you can tilt your hands and uh, work with it really nicely and see it the whole time that you're working on it. Um, like I said, it, this particular set up, the way I've got it set up works beautifully for polishing uh, or buffing your polymer clay. Now here's a piece here that I have buffed on one side and I haven't buffed on the other. And there's just an enormous difference in how shiny these two pieces are. I'll show you how I buff it in a sec. Now what I did for this one is I bought the black back plate and a felt disc. Now these discs come with um, kind of this white stick that um, it's, it's kind of like a white version of rouge that um, jewelers use to uh, polish metal and stuff and they tell you to charge up your felt um, wheel before you with this stick. I recommend if you're going to use it for polymer clay don't put any of the um, the white stick on the wheel. Leave it clean um, another thing is that you want to, it comes, it's pretty firm. What you want to do is you want to end up scratching up the surface and a, a fork works well. I saw somebody do this with some other type of wheel the other day online, so I thought it was a good idea. Um, but you can do it while it's working. I'm just going to start it up. Now always make sure with any rotary tool, make sure your hair's tied back if it's long and it could get caught in here. Um, no loose clothing, no 
scarves and dramatic jewelry and things like that. Um, also, the way this spins, it, it has the rotation here, it goes this way. So it will spin away from you and, and get caught in here if you end up letting go of it. Always use a really light touch. But when you you can scratch it up, what I'm going to show you here is I'm just going to start it up and it, it starts, this is as slow as it'll go and this is as fast as it'll go. I generally kind of work on a half speed. And then you can just take your um, fork and just kind of hold it up against the surface and scratch up that felt. Because it's spinning so fast, it doesn't act like there's any holes in there at all. So you're not going to slip through the thing. But this will, and you can kind of scratch up the edges here. And this will just soften up the felt a little bit so it has lots of nice little hairs for polishing your polymer clay. Like that. Now, when you're when you're uh, buffing your, your pieces, and I've already sanded right down to the finest grid I'm going to go on here. Um, you lift the piece up towards the disc. So you don't you may be used to, if you're using a buffing wheel of the other types, coming in from the side. Don't do that. Come up from underneath and practice coming up straight from underneath. And use a light touch. If you push really hard on here, it'll grab it and fling it away. So I'm just going to... Oh, and you should know it's, it's soft, like it's fine on my hands. I'm not worried about that, even when it's going fast. Um, on the edges, it can kind of give you a bit of a rug burn because it's really going fast on the edges there. But underneath, even if your fingers do touch it, it's the felt especially is n no problem for your hands. So, so you just want to lift the piece up and gently touch it and kind of move it around. And hopefully the camera can see it well. And it's already starting to get a bit of a dull sheen to it which is really nice for these um, mica shift uh, beads here. Mica shift is just an amazing technique that looks 3D, but it's completely flat. But it looks especially great if it's buffed up. So I'm just gonna keep going and you can see it comes shinier and shinier and shinier. So this is a wonderful tool to bring into your studio. It's kind of in the $300 range, depending on the different accessories. I mean, you could spend $1,000 if you wanted to and get all kinds of different wheels and things for it. Um, as I get uh, it more perfected is with the sanding and that kind of thing, I will start showing you um, my best methods for do working with polymer clay on it. And then, of course, you can use a tool like this for um, all kinds. You can sharpen your blades with it, with the right accessories. You can um, you can grind glass. You can do all kinds of cool stuff with it. So I'm really excited to get to sh to play with this and show it to you. I think it's going to be a um, beautiful tool for all of you polymer clay artists that um, like to do things in an easier way, in a cleaner way, faster way. Oh, look at that glass I'm getting on there. It's fast, easy, beautiful, and hopefully the camera is seeing that, but it's just amazing. So I'm really excited about the Jewel Tool for Polymer Clay, and as soon as I get more of the accessories and figure out exactly the right grits of sandpaper and stuff that will work beautifully, I will let you know. So I hope you enjoyed that. Make sure if this was helpful for you, make sure to click that thumbs up button and subscribe. Um, if you have any questions or if you're excited about this tool, make sure to let me know in the comment section below. And we will see you next time. Bye for now.